So how do you vectorize any image like this in Adobe Illustrator? Now I'll show you how to vectorize any old image. It's really easy, basically just one click and you can get a pretty good result. But if you wanna kinda of like sprinkle the vector design magic onto it, I will share with you my uh, super famous three step vectorizing system process. Just a tiny bit more work and everything looks a bit more awesomer. And ooh, if you hang around right to the end, I've got a bonus. It's the trick that I use myself uh, to make myself look like a color genius, when in fact I am very average indeed. All right, my name is Dan Scott. I am an Adobe Certified Instructor and I teach design courses at bringerinlaptop.com. And today, you and me are gonna turn images into cool, editable vectors. All right, first up, let's bring in an image file and go down to place. That's the boring way. What I end up doing is actually just dragging it in from my finder window, either Mac or PC, and they just kind of like jump in there. If you do want to follow along, I'll have the exercise files linked in the description below. I'm starting with 01 and 04. Now with any of the images selected, the function you're looking for is something called uh, image trace. It used to be called live trace, and all you do is click on it. Okay, there are a lot of default options. You can change them all afterwards. Like the ones at the beginning, I want colors in mind, so I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna guess it's six colors. There you go, there's my dog. Now, depending on the image and what you're looking for, often you'll need to mess around with how many colors. So with it selected again, can you see over here, I've got my preset six colors, but I can click on this little icon here to open the tracing panel. And over here, you can mess around with how many colors you want, because there's not a lot of detail in the dog. If I bump it up to 10 though, I've already practiced, okay, you'll see that there's just a lot more detail going into the dog. You might decide you need nine, you might need 19. It's totally up to you. Compared to his buddy here, the old tape deck, pretty sure everybody had one of these. I'm gonna do the same thing, live trace. I'm gonna pick three colors and Three colors work for this guy. I lie, maybe four colors. Triple lie, five colors. There you go, enough detail. And the other one that gets used a lot is, you can do it from the preset or this panel over here, you can go to black and white. Mess around with threshold, okay? Less and more will depend on what will be included and what will not be. There you go, that's live trace. All right, and that might be enough. We've vectorized an image. Uh, but if you do want to go further, remove the background, uh, get rid of that kind of like, I don't know, illustratorly um, highly processed look to it, go into a bit more detail, uh, get ready for Dan's uh, super famous three-step uh, vectorizing system process thing. <laughs> All right, step one, we go backwards and remove the background first. Now the way to remove it is to use Photoshop. So I've got the 04 image open here. And even if you haven't used Photoshop very much, it's actually just a couple of clicks, it's super easy. Okay, all you need to do is use the select subject and generally it's pretty amazing. I'm gonna add this little mask here, job done. To get it out of Photoshop and into Illustrator, you can just right click the layer name over here and say this one here, quick export for PNG. Pick a place, give it a name and save it. If you don't have Photoshop, I've actually added the PNG versions. Okay, they have this transparent background in the exercise files that you can download. Link in the description. Just gonna work my way through all the images. Some of them need a little tidying up. Uh, select subject in this case, grab the background. I'm just gonna use my uh, quick selection tool. Hold down option on the Mac, alt on the PC, and just kind of click in here to get rid of that gap. The go of option, and I'm gonna click once on all these buttons here just to add to the selection. We don't have to be super tidy here because the image trace really changes the image anyway. But I want the buttons. And holding option or alt, I want not this background. Click this button to add a mask. Quick export as a PNG. Work my way through the other ones. And if you're thinking, oh man, I should really learn more about Photoshop. Ooh, I know a guy. All right, step number two. We're gonna do the same as before. We're gonna use image trace. I'm gonna bring in those two images now that have no background from Photoshop. Okay, and let's look at the difference between the two. Start with the puppy and I'm gonna to go to image trace. Go to my six colors. I'm gonna open up the panel. Now what we can do is under advanced, there's this option in here that says, please ignore this color. And if you click on it, it's pretty magic and kind of goes off and looks at the background color, which our case is white, just removes it. Nice. There you go. I'm going to switch mine to 10 colors. And in here under advanced, the other things you can play around with. Do you want more paths? Crank it up high, let it do its work, or less, depending on how much detail you want. Same with the corners. Do you want yours to be more roundy, less roundy? It's only kind of subtle changes here. The other useful one is simplify. Okay, it can be quite detailed depending on your image. Okay, simplify will cut it down a little bit. I'm gonna show you an extra trick in step three to go even further and get a better look. Same with our tape deck here. You can go to image trace, but with the panel open now, I can go to the preset and just pick three colors. I'm gonna ignore the background color. Mm, 
Maybe only four. Oh, that's what I want. All right, let's close the panel and you can see the difference here. I've got this nice unique shape here. And the last part um, when you are using Live Trace is that we can't go and do anything with these now. They're kind of trapped in this world of Live Trace. What we can do is there's an option over here with the image selected called Expand. If I click on Expand, it breaks it into vectors that I can now click on with my white arrow, okay, and move around and start adjusting. That's the direct selection tool up here. I'm gonna save for this one. I'm gonna expand him. There you go. Command Y to look in outline mode. Look at all the vector goodness. It's control Y on a PC. I've got a shortcut sheet that I'll leave a link to in the description if you want that. All right, that's step two. Step three though. Let's get this looking less, I don't know, illustratory. All right, the secret sauce, step three. It's something called smoothing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate both of these. If you hold down the option and shift key, after you start dragging these things, okay, or that's Alt and Shift on a PC, you get a duplicate. That's what I want, I want to compare the two. Let's do the tape deck first. Okay, with it selected, go up to Object, go down to Path, and there's one in here called Smooth. There we go. Now this thing's kind of in the way, you can grab the little dotted lines to move it, and then you can let it do Auto Smooth. It has no idea what it's doing. Okay, then you can just drag around, keep moving this and trying to find. It takes a little while for it to react, I love it, kind of simplifies it, removes a lot of the, I don't know, scratchiness that comes from some of the default uh, image traits. You see the buttons become these like little blobs, everything's just a little bit more simple or smooth. All right, it's gonna work for me. Before, pretty cool. After, more illustrative. Let's do the same for the dog. We're gonna do a one-two combo for him. We're gonna go to object, path, and we're gonna do two things. We're gonna go simplify, then smooth, bam, bam. Okay, so we're gonna go simplify to start with. I'm gonna make it much more simplified, even further. Removes a lot of the anchor points. And now with it selected, I'm gonna to go to smooth. So object path, go to smooth. I'm gonna smooth out all of those things, crank it up, see how far we can go. I love it. Find some position in the slider that works for you. It can take a little while to process. Oh, I love it. There we go. No, no, what do you think? Before, quite illustrator. After, a little bit more abstract, but more like illustration. But now we're gonna work on color which is outside of the vectorizing, but is super important. That's why it's bonus time. And the bonus is being a color genius. I am not a color genius, but I have a trick that I use to appropriate colors. I definitely don't steal them from other people. I totally steal them from other people. I'll show you my method. Often I'll go to dribble.com or Behance and just have a little look through and just see if I can find colors that I like. You wait there as I speed scroll. Okay, so jump cut because Dan spent about five minutes looking for <laughs> color schemes. Once he's found something, I'm gonna use my shortcut on my Mac, which is Command Shift 4, and I just drag a box around it. Not sure what it is on a PC. Let me know in the comments if there's an easy way that you know. Or of course, you could just download the image. I'm just gonna drag in my screenshot. I'm gonna steal colors from it. Now this is the handy trick. Let's watch this. I am going to grab my direct selection tool, which is the white arrow up here. I'm gonna click on one of the colors. I know I've got about three in here. If you've got 10 colors, you're gonna to have to do this 10 times. So I've got this selected. Now what I should do is spend ages shift clicking all the little bits of color that are the same that I wanna change. I wanna change all of this color. Ready to have your brain melted? Watch this. I can select this first color, go to select and go to pick all of the same fill colors, please, in the whole document. I know, right? Let me know in the comments if that's like the first time you've seen that one. I remember when I first saw it, I was like, oh, I spent all of my life shift clicking my life away. <laughs> There's a shortcut. <sighs> now I can grab my eyedropper tool. This is this one here where you can use the I key. Way better shortcut. Okay, and you can just decide, oh, I'm gonna make this one the green from in here. Oh, here we go. Background, I'm gonna use my eyedropper tool. I'm gonna pick this yellow that's in there. Oh, it's not quite yellow, yellowy green. In here, I'm gonna pick this color. Use my sweet new select, uh, same fill color. Pick all the little bits in there, and I'm gonna use my eyedropper tool to say, do I want that color? Do I want that color? Oh, I think I want that color. The last one is I'm gonna use my uh, A shortcut for my direct selection tool. Selected, select, same fill color. I for the eyedropper tool, and I'm gonna use that color there. It's very similar, let's use this one. Mm, very cool. Change that background. Oh, better. Bit of color theft. All right, I'm gonna speed through the other ones. Wait there. There you go, I've done them all. Check them out. So we started with an image, simple old live trace. Nothing wrong with it, but sprinkle in the magic. 
more artistic, more illustrative. And we got to appropriate colors. I'm doing air quotes because we just really stole them. Check this one out. Cool image, cool vector thing. But now we've got no background and we got to pick our cool colors. I'm unsure about the colors in that one. These are the ones you didn't see, the Vespa, Vespa. And look, cool Vespa. I love finding other people's color schemes to kind of push my limits of what I normally pick. There's no chance I would have come up with that my own. And the last one here, a sweet cassette tape, and bam, look at that. And after all that, you know what I want to do now? I want to show you another thing. I want to show you some of the color you can do with some of the generative AI features. But guess what? This video uh, has got way too long. I have a habit of having scope creep on these how-to videos, so we're gonna have to call it there. But what I will do is I have got a video in my paid course, my Illustrator Essentials in Advance. There's a video on there on generative recolor. I'll leave a free link to that in the description so you can check that out. Or I'm just saying you might wanna join me for the full course, Illustrator Essentials and Illustrator Advance. We do all sorts of cool stuff that you can see here on the screen. So much cool stuff and we get to hang out more. There'll be links to those courses in the description as well. Now that you've learned all of these skills, it's time to practice, definitely not homework. Um, the brief is going to be, I want you to look around your desk, okay, right now, wherever you are, and take a photo of, or find a representative of online, um, and of that object, I want you to vectorize it and share it with me. Make sure you sprinkle on the famous three-step method. I bet you there's gonna be something on the page here that says it's not famous. I know the editor too well. Thank you, Taylor. Um, but once you've actually done it, um, remember it's not a beauty pageant, it is just practice, so it doesn't have to be the best one. Just share it with me on any of these things. Which side is it? <laughs> is that side? That side. Probably that side. Okay, any of these social media accounts, and make sure you use the hashtag B-Y-O-L Vector. Okay, that way that I can find it and that you can search for other people's ones and see what they did. And that, my friend, is going to be it. Thanks for hanging out. It's been good fun. Uh, I'm surprised, though, you haven't mentioned how cool my shirt is. I know you've been thinking about it and eyeing it up. How cool is this shirt? Shout out to Kari from Adobe Max. I love this shirt. All right, that's it. Goodbye. Kakite ano.